This prophetic encouragement has been transcribed from Nate Johnston's Instagram Live on January 13, 2024. For the burning ones, everyone, hope you guys are doing well. I just got off alive with Lou Engel and man, God just really, we've been getting so many messages just from so many people saying, hey, that was so impacting. Thank you for praying over us. Thank you for giving us permission to birth. Thank you for validating the voices of women around the world. I just want to jump into a word on the back end of that because I've just been just burning with this word in my spirit probably for the last, I don't know, few weeks since the beginning of the year. And when the Lord spoke this to me, it is something that He's spoken to this over me many seasons of my life that I needed encouragement. Normally this word has come though in a time where I am under a Jezebelic attack. This word has normally come when I'm facing a Jezebel spirit or feeling silenced or feeling muzzled or another time has been where I'm almost. Like I'm teetering on the edge of complacency in my life and the Lord's wanting to get me burning again and He's wanting me to feel just that intimate touch and I'm a little bit away from it. But the beginning of this year, I felt the Lord say this very clear word to me and it was such a convicting word and I just released the word about Psalms 24, sending in the hill of the Lord in this year, not taking the year, just the way I've taken every other year. There was something holy about this year that He wanted to reveal and He didn't want me overly committing to anything yet because He was going to reveal something that I wasn't expecting or there was going to be something. I needed capacity in my gear in my life for what He was about to unfold, and maybe you're feeling that as well, but… He simply said to me, Nate, I need you to lean into your jacket. Nate, I need you to lean into your mantle. And I began to look back at 2022. In 2023. It's almost like the Lord was wanting me to see how many different situations and circumstances throughout those particular years, maybe even back to 2020, but particularly 2022 and 2023. There was such a fight for me stepping into the weightier part of my mantle because there was so much warfare on it. It's like any time I did step into that weightier part, the governmental part of my calling, it was like there was so much that there was this continuous onslaught between the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness, and I was finding myself just crushed and broken and finding that every time I did that, it was amazing the moment because I'm just crushing the head of the serpent in a way, but it was like, wow, man, the cost and the price for stepping out for the Lord in the weightier part of my jacket is so intense and I dunno if I can handle it. And I want to ask you guys, have you felt that 2022, 2023, man, the warfare that came for stepping out of my calling was so intense? I want to speak to those particularly right now that have felt like, well, I feel like I've kind of drifted away. I've kind of pulled back. I've pulled back from that part of my calling because it was so intense. I pulled back from that part of my mantle where it was like that's where the most anointing comes. That's where the fire comes out of me. That's where my voice just, it booms that roar comes out of me in darkness, fleece, because I just can't do it. I don't know if I could do it. I'm already trying to walk out the tiredness and the weariness of the past season. I just don't know if I can do that right now and I felt the Lord say something to him. It was like he was asking me just to be obedient, to trust him that I stepped out into the weightier part of my mantle as I leant into it that he was going to meet me there and he was going to protect me in that. And I felt it and I felt that instant. Oh, because I'm the kind of guy, just so you know, I'm the kind of guy I'm all in man. I'm all in. We are in America. I brought my kids around the world. We've been in a nomadic lifestyle for a long time. My kids are traveled all around the world. They've been in all these uncomfortable situations and circumstances. We've lived in an RV. We've had no place to live at some point in time simply because we said yes to the gospel. 
We're all in kind of people revival or bust kind of people, but there's a cost. And sometimes when you look at your family, you look at the different, the tolls taken in different situations and circumstances, it can begin to speak to you and it begin to make you maybe pull back and you kind of retreat from the call of God on your life like, God, I just need to kind of get things set. And I believe there is a time and a season to get things set and get your family and get things sorted. God wants your family to thrive, but just keep on track with me for a moment. There was a deeper call in this word that he spoke and it was like he wasn't just asking me to lean into the weighty part of my mantle. He was asking me, he was asking me to surrender all the things, all the worries, all the concerns I had with the cost. The price that came with stepping into the deeper part of my mantle, the weighty part of my mantle. And it was like, oh, and I'm already all in. He also told me he wanted me to do a 40-day water fast. And then yesterday Lou just asked me, Hey, will you meet me in this 40-day water fast? I'm like, I've never done a 40-day water fast in my life, but on the 1st of January, the Lord told me you're going to do a 40-day water fast. Well, he asked me, Will you do this as well? And in that moment I literally fell to my knees and it was just here right here where I worship and I fell to my knees and I said, Lord, okay. And in that moment, I just had to release all of the things to him, all of the overheads of this is what it may cost me. This is what I've experienced in the past. These are the deep dark moments that no one knows about, the dark nights of the soul. All of that I had to release to him and say, I'm alive for one thing God, and it's to give you glory. I'm alive for one thing. It's to see you touch the nations for my life. What can I do to be a conduit? What can I do God to represent you? What can I do to be the gates? Open up Psalms 24, lift up your heads, your heavenly gates wing wide, you ancient door of the King of glory may come in. What can I do to be that God? Because this life isn't about me. It's that part of the scripture that we overcome with the word of the Lamb and the word of our testimony we love, not our lives unto death. It was like a moment where yet again, the law is asking me, will you surrender even when it feels like you're still recouping from a previous season of walking out pioneering? It's like you're still just trying to reconcile the past season of pioneering and the difficulty that came with it. And the Lord on the back of that is like, Do you trust me? Do you trust me? Do you trust me? Lean into your jacket. And we know the story of Elijah in 2 Kings 18 where he stepped into the weighty part of his jacket. He stepped into the weighty part of his mantle and he established this altar and the fire came. You know what happened? They chased the prophets of Baal. We know that story. The most amazing thing happened after that was where the drought and the land broke that one of his servants saw the cloud the size of a man's hand. He said, keep looking, keep looking. I believe we're in that moment again, but there are two processes that happens in the seasons of rain, the seasons of the sound of rain. When we're about to see revival, there is a conflicting tension that takes place. I want to quickly highlight that tension I think we already have, but let me just paint this picture for you. Right after Elijah was used by God in a powerful way, right after he was used by God in such a powerful way, word got back to Jezebel and Jezebel said something along the lines of, You wish you were dead, you wish you were dead. And then Elijah fell out. Now, he didn't fall out of his mantle, but come on. He dropped it for a moment and he ran and he literally said, and he regurgitated the words of Jezebel. He instantly regurgitated the words of the spirit that was attacking him and he went and hid and we know the story there. If you do know the story, go read it. 2 Kings 18, 19, amazing. He went and hid and he complained before God, God. I'm the only righteous one and Jezebel's doing this and that. 
and God and he's just doing this pity party story because he stepped out of his mantle. When you're out of your mantle, you're not going to see things right. When you're out of your mantle, you're going to cop hits that God doesn't want you to hit your mantle is your protection. It's the glory of God over you. When you're out of your mantle, you're not hearing God correctly and I felt the Lord say something to me this year. Your mantle will be your protection this year. Your mantle will be your protection this year. Your mantle will be your protection, and many right now have dropped their mantle because of the warfare, but it is your mantle that will protect you and cover you. To the end of the story there with Elijah, God brought the fiery, brought the wind, he brought all the stuff. He could not hear the voice in any of those things, and then he heard the still small voice of God which highlights to us that this year we need to get back to the whispers of God. We need to get back to the place where we're ascending the hill of the Lord so we can hear the whispers of heaven so that we are in alignment with His heart again. But the most amazing part of this story is where Elijah stepped out of the cave, out of that place and wrapped his mantle around himself again, and I want to encourage you right now. I want to encourage those who have been through some stuff you've been through just the dark night of the soul you've been through a few years where it's felt like, I don't know how I can survive this, let alone stepping back into the authority, that anointing of my life. I'm here to tell you today, maybe you like me, have to just surrender and step into the obedience of the Lord. Pick up that mantle around you. Say, God, I gotta trust you again. I've got to just do this because I'm not born for anything else. This is what I'm alive for. Even if it is rough, even if I have some seasons where I'm man, I take some hits. I'm believing this season you're going to step into the weighty part of your mantle, but you're not going to feel the hits anymore. You're not going to feel the hits anymore. You're going to be able to wrap that mantle around yourself. Step into the weighty part of your mantle and you'll not feel the hits. I pray this over you in the name of Jesus. You just begin to feel a fresh burning in your spirit. Maybe you've been feeling that complacency, maybe even compromise, beginning to just enter in and you're just, you're drifting off. You're just looking at the wrong things. You're in the wrong circles, in the wrong environments. You're just surrounding yourself with faithless people who are not wanting to serve or follow God. And right now, the Lord is wanting you to let all of that go and He's wanting you to pick up that mantle. Again, I need to say something to the prophets for a moment. I need to say something to you. This is not a year to be dwelling on the trauma of your past. I say this with all due respect and compassion for what you've been in. But I believe as you wrap that mantle around yourself, it's time to step into your calling and it's time to leave the false callings and diversions that you've been operating in because of the warfare. Let me paint a really good picture for you. You need to hear this. Rehearsing woundedness is not your calling, okay? Being a wounded prophet is not a calling. Being a victim, Calling yourself a victim and having a testimony of being a victim is not your calling. There is another part to your calling in your testimony that you're yet to see. You can't stay there. You can't stay dwelling in that it's not helping you. It's not helping you constantly surrounding yourself with people that you talk about the souls and the leaders who hurt you. There's a time and a place for that. There's a time and a place to walk through all of that and maybe you need to do that, that's fine. I'm talking about where you've made the warfare against you, your calling, that's not your calling. Stepping into the weighty part of your mantle means you're going to have to let go. That means you're going to have to let God be your recompense. That means where you're going to have to let God fight for you. Defend you. When right now you're surrounded by all the words and people judging your character, you're going to have to let all that go. You're going to have to let God do that. Your calling is not that. Elijah's calling was not in the complaining, in sitting in obscurity, telling God he was the only one, okay? 
His calling was found at Mount Carmel and it is time for you and I really do say this with all compassion because you know my heart. I'm raising up the prophets, the wild ones. This year we're going to have these discussions. We're going to see God deliver people. That's all a part of it. We need to see healthy prophets. I love prophets. I love the wounded ones. I love the ones that have been through stuff that walk with a limp. That's been me too, but there's another part of the story. There's another chapter you have not seen, and I'm going to call you into that right now. We need you to step into the weighty part of your mantle, okay? I want to quickly say something else. I did not mean to say this. I need to say this as well. Operating in an orphan spirit is not your calling trying to find your position because it's been a bit of a long journey and a long road to finding that open door and people that would validate you and affirm you. That doesn't mean that you have to try to chase down titles. That doesn't mean you need to chase down roles to validate that which you feel hasn't been, the equation hasn't been balanced yet. That doesn't mean you chase that down. That's where you're going to have to leave that to the Lord. This is where you're going to have to lean into the identity of who the Father says you are. This is going to be a season for you where the Father wants to affirm you himself. He's jealous. He doesn't want to let anyone else do it. That role, that position will not fulfill you. That front row seat will not fulfill you. I was telling Lou this morning how many years ago I was asked to preach at a church, and as I was sitting on the front row, Holy Spirit said, Will you go a different way with me tonight? And I threw out my notes and I got up on the stage and I laid down. And if you were there at Glory City or that Friday night, I laid down and I didn't even know half of what I said, but I was just going after this thing in the orphan spirit and then people just rushed down the front because there was such a repentance that broke out. I need to say this to you. I need this to say this especially to the prophetic voices out there, the apostolic voices, okay? There is another dimension of the anointing God wants to reveal to you that's on the other side of you letting go of people. This is a season. The law wants you to discover your calling that is not against personalities, but it's against principalities. God's wanting you to discover that you carry a royal scepter, you are royal garb and God has called you out of the rags of simply trying to get position and trying to validate that the hard road you've been through. Leave all that to the Lord and let this be the year that He launches you and calls you into a deeper place of consecration with Him, a deeper place of branding with Him, and you're going to burn in a way you've not burned in years, says the Lord, because I'm calling you to your knees and from your knees, you're going to shift nations and you are going to get influenced simply because you sought me. Let this be a year that you seek me and you find me, says the Lord. And this will be a year that I right the wrongs of the past. Do you trust me that I will right the wrongs of the past? You trust me that I'm going to cause you to step into the place of being fully satiated in your calling, fully utilized in the full dimension of the calling and anointing are placed upon your life for you, you'll end this year. I prophesy knowing what it feels like to be enveloped by the Holy Spirit and not lacking any dimension of the power and authority the Holy Spirit upon your life. You'll operate in that full dimension of that mantle that God has given you and you will not regret one thing. You'll say yes to the things you need to say yes to, and you'll say no to the things you're not meant to be a part of, but you'll know that you're fully obedient and surrendered to the things He told you to lay down your life for. I just decree this over you, that the muzzle is broken. I decree this over you that the assignments of the past that have been against you, that have kept you back, have been shattered. I decree over you that the wrong alignments that have kept you tangled and held back and suppressed are right now beginning to break free from you. The Lord is giving you eyes to see those around you. You don't need to curse them or you don't need to look down on them for this, but there are people that do not know the person that you are called to be. They do not see the general. 
they do not see the prophet. They do not see the apostle or the evangelist that's right now. Man, people, I feel this right now. You're beginning to feel a Holy Spirit who's feeling like a fluttering in their spirit, who's feeling a shaking over their body, who's feeling a conviction of Holy Spirit that's manifesting in a physical way. This is what the Lord is saying over you this year. You will discover who you are. This is a year that you will discover who God has called you to be and like I prayed with Lou, I pray for that. You would feel the permission of heaven over you this year and you'd feel the lies and the chains of the lack of permission or the roadblocks being broken off you so that you would be able to fully say yes to that which God has called you to and you'll come out of alignment and come out of agreement with that which has held you back for such a long period of time, and now it's time says the Lord. Now it's time says to the Lord to accept the mantle which you've been afraid of stepping into. This is a moment. The Lord says that you will choose Him over the meaningless comforts for you being standing on the sidelines saying, God, how come they get to do this? How come they get to do that? But now it's your moment to step into the calling God has for your life. I decree this over you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Guys, by the way, if you didn't see the live today, Lou and I were just sharing from a bunch of Mordecai's just releasing a word of encouragement. Go to Lou's page. It's not on mine. So go to his Instagram where you'll see, we just encourage the women, we just encourage them and we just really summon them forward for this year, October 12th on the Mall Atonement Day, we're going to be gathering a million women and men as well. Kids, all of us are going to be there. It's going to be amazing. A few updates. By the way, I got to share this because many of you won't even know we're going to be in Australia in a few months. Guys, Christy and I are doing a few meetings probably. We're doing Gold Coast, Tweed Lockie, I saw you on here, my brother from Tweed, The Gathering. We're going to be with Locke and Tara. We may be in Gosford. We're going to be maybe the middle part of New South Wales and we're going to be down in Hobart and we're going to be gathering churches to pray and we're going to simply be stirring up revival, the nation of Australia. And of course we're going to be doing worship gatherings here in Colorado Springs. Wild Ones launches this year. I'm so excited about that. Finally getting my prophetic company together. It's going to be awesome. Let's be undignified for Jesus, guys. Let's rebel against the norm. Let's rebel against all of the demonic ideologies and stuff out there and be the authentic you that God's called you to be. That is what you are alive for. Don't walk on eggshells this year. Crush him under your feet. Step into the weighty part of your mantle and receive the power of the Holy Spirit. That is the only power to change and transform this world. I need to jump on some time. Share a dream I had last night. You know what? I'm going to do it. You guys don't mind. I'll quickly share a dream with you guys. You guys know Ross Johnston, right? Ross Johnston. He is an amazing, amazing friend, man of God. He happens to have a very awesome last name. I need to share this. This is really important. Last night I had a dream about Ross Johnston. We're seeing him in February at her voice in Los Angeles. Need to come to that in the dream. Him and I were commissioned to go into this city that was Sodom and Gomorrah. It was in lockdown because there was so much darkness and the church was like, don't touch this, don't touch the city. And him and I looked at each other. This is what we're born for. We're born to go to the places that the people will not go to. And did he post about this? I didn't even know he posted about this. Okay. Anyway, Ross and I went into this place and it was the most. I can't even explain to you the things I saw in this dream, 
but it was the most dark and demonic environment I've probably ever seen, even my own eyes. And I've been into some crazy farewell places where you see demons in front of you and we're in this city and people are just, there's a smell of rotting flesh, which it represents the spirit. I'll talk about this in a private video sometime because there was so much that God revealed to me about what the spirit in this city was. And it really speaks to, it really speaks to what God is going after this year. And it was like in a moment, I begin to see through the eyes of the church and the judgment that came against this particular spirit and these people that were in bondage. And then Ross and I shone our torches on these people and they were like stuck in cement into the walls of the city and they were crying and their flesh was rotting. It was quite grotesque. And the heart of the Father came over us and we both started weeping. We both fell to the ground, travailed and crying, and we say, God, please save this city. Please save this city, save this city. And then it's almost like we couldn't smell any of the smell anymore. We just were on a mission to rescue these people and we're pulling them out of the walls. We're pulling them out of the ground and they're being completely restored in their bodies. And all the flesh and the wounds that were exposed just began to get healed up as we begin to hug them and love on them. And I believe God's doing that this year. And I feel like this year, the Lord's wanting the church to break out of its comforts, to release the heart of the Father. There's so much more in this dream I can share, but I won't do it right now. All I know is this, that I want to put a burning in your spirit. I want to put a burning in your spirit. Holy Spirit brood over them, God brood over them. God, don't let them do 2024, the way they've done 2023, God. Let them step into being the burning ones that you've called them to be in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray God, that we are ascend this year, God, and we get keys that we need to be able to see the deliverance of nations. God, I pray this your God would step into the mantles that are being reserved for a generation who are going to be unapologetic with the gospel of Jesus Christ released into the nations and would speak identity acceptance into those who feel so broken. And God, will begin to see deliverance, repentance, healing, in the mass harvest that is waiting for us begin to unfold. I pray this over you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Anyway, love you guys. Thanks for joining me and I just pray that God would just, okay, I want to pray one more thing. Dreams, let them come. Dreams, let them come. Dreams. Let them come in. Jesus' mighty name. God, I thank you for the windows of revelation being awoken in us this year that we begin to dream. Dreams, keep us on track. Dreams keep us on track. They keep us burning. They keep our furnace stoked. I pray dreams would come and they would agitate you to stay out of complacency and on fire for Jesus. Bless you guys. Bye. Here are some verses for this word. 1 Kings 18 verses 36-46 from the Amplified Bible Elijah's Prayer At the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, Elijah the prophet approached the altar and said, O Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel Jacob, let it be known today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and that I have done all these things at your word. Answer me, O Lord, answer me, so that this people may know that you, O Lord, are God, and that you have turned their hearts back to you. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering and the wood, and even the stones and the dust. It also licked up the water in the trench. When all the people saw it, they fell face downward. And they said, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. Then Elijah said to them, Seize the prophets of Baal. Do not let one of them escape. They seized them. And Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon, and as God's law required, killed them there. 
Now Elijah said to Ahab, Go up, eat and drink, for there is the sound of the roar of an abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink. And Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. And he crouched down to the earth and put his face between his knees, and he said to his servant, Go up, look toward the sea. So he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. Elijah said, Go back seven times. And at the seventh time the servant said, A cloud as small as a man's hand is coming up from the sea. And Elijah said, Go up, say to Ahab, Prepare your chariot and go down, so that the rain shower does not stop you. In a little while the sky grew dark with clouds and wind, and there were heavy showers. And Ahab mounted and rode his chariot and went inland to Jezreel. Then the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah giving him supernatural strength. He girded up his loins and outran Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel nearly twenty miles. 1 Kings 19 verses 1-8 from the Amplified Bible Elijah flees from Jezebel. Now Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and how he had killed all the prophets of Baal with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So may the gods do to me, and even more, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like the life of one of them. And Elijah was afraid and arose and ran for his life, and he came to Beersheba which belongs to Judah, and he left his servant there. But he himself traveled a day's journey into the wilderness, and he came and sat down under a juniper tree and asked God that he might die. He said, It is enough. Now, O Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. He lay down and slept under the juniper tree, and behold, an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and by his head there was a bread cake baked on hot coal, and a pitcher of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. Then the angel of the Lord came again a second time and touched him and said, Get up, and eat, for the journey is too long for you without adequate sustenance. So he got up and ate and drank, and with the strength of that food he traveled forty days and nights to Horeb Sinai, the mountain of God. 2 Kings 2 verses 8-14 from the Amplified Bible And Elijah took his mantle coat and rolled it up and struck the waters, and they were divided this way and that, so that the two of them crossed over on dry ground. And when they had crossed over, Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I shall do for you before I am taken from you. And Elisha said, Please let a double a portion of your spirit be upon me. He said, You have asked for a difficult thing. However, if you see me when I am taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. As they continued along and talked, behold, a chariot of fire with horses of fire appeared suddenly and separated the two of them, and Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha saw it and cried out, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and its horsemen. And he no longer saw Elijah. Then he took hold of his own clothes and tore them into two pieces in grief. He picked up the mantle of Elijah that fell off him, and went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan. He took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and struck the waters and said, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? And when he too had struck the waters, they divided this way and that, and Elisha crossed over. Here's a pray along video. Heavenly Father, all-powerful, almighty, all-merciful, and all-loving Father. You love me so much that you don't want me stuck in the past. Let me lean into the mantle of the assignment you have for me. Let me run with you as you do something new in 2024. Let me burn again for you in what you have purposed me to do. Let me step into the new call of this calling. Burn off any traumas in the past. Bitterness, unforgiveness, tiredness, 
and hope deferred so I can burn again and run again with the freedom that Jesus purchased for me with His blood. As I lean in more and ascend more this 2024, I know that me and my loved ones are under the shadow of your wings. And, I cast away my worries and concerns because you are my protector, defender, provider, and, most of all, a loving and perfect father. And, I stay as your child in the apple of your eye. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. To support and read more prophetic words from today's featured prophet, Nate Johnston, please visit natanchristie.co.